Hey guys, welcome to Prince of Peace Tarot. I'm Justin, and today I'll be doing a reading for those of you with Sagittarius placements in your chart. So if you have Sagittarius anywhere within your chart, this reading can resonate with you. And if it does, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be updated anytime that I put out a reading. Okay guys, so before I jump into your spread, let's say a prayer. Infinite Creator, Olo Dumare, to my higher self, my Ori, Eshu, Obatala, to the Egon Marine Laie, Holy Spirit, Spirit Guides, to my benevolent ancestors, known and unknown, Florine Williams, Norman Williams, Exius Willie, thank you for allowing me to source the most accurate reading for those with Sagittarius placements in their chart. Okay, guys, hey, let's get into your reading. I have two spreads out here uh, for confirmation. We have um, the African Tarot, and I'm using the Tarot of the Orisha. Um, let's, this reading, this reading is for, um, my singles, okay? If you're single, identify as a starseed, shaman, high priest, high priestess. This is your reading, okay? And I mean, if you are not single, um, and you identify with that spiritually and you feel yourself going through changes, this could definitely resonate with you as well. But I'm feeling a strong, um need to talk to my singles okay? okay guys let's jump into your spread okay so what i'm p picking up intuitively um for this reading this is for my um star seeds my, my single star seeds star seeds shamans high priest high priestesses okay um and it's like i said it's for those of you who are single or coming out of uh relationships um and you're about to be single this is your message um, I keep telling you guys about this uh, divine energy inside of you, divine energy governing you. Okay, it is your higher self. All right. And however you view your higher self, because um, some of you can view them as Orishas or guardian angels or um, you just say it's my higher self or it's God. But this energy around you is ready to, to bless you with something. All right. Ace of Wands in the reverse okay that's the second time in a reading where your ace of wands is coming in the reverse it's it's as if it's waiting for you to turn around and to or to um to uh get into alignment and by that i mean you need you need a longer stretch of doing something what am i trying to say like a practice like practicing you need to have been doing a certain thing over and over and over and over again in order to meet this thing, um, in order to get the blessing. And I have an example for you at, towards the end. But what I'm trying to say is like the, when I tell you guys to build that routine or if you have a spiritual practice um, or whatever the case may be, because what what's wrong is what keeps coming up. You guys, it's, this, it's too much lack. It's too much lack mentality. And I'm going to tell you why. I'll, I'll tell you about that lack mentality to hopefully help you get over that because you got the five of pentacles in reverse. You're going to come out of lack. And they're asking you to come out of this lack mentality of feeling abandoned like you don't have enough because things are changing. Um, the other reason why some of you could be upset about like, man, I've been single for a long time or my finances have always been kind of like in a pinch for a long time where I never meet the right woman or the right man. A lot of that energy has to do with ancestral karma, okay? Ancestral karma. Because you can feel in yourself like, I, I know I'm a decent person. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm, I'm a decent person. I don't know why nothing's working out. I have done multiple readings where, um, especially when I have your um, angel ancestor uh, oracle deck, that ancestor, what is it? I can't even remember what it's called, but it talks about your ancestral patterns. It comes out over and over again. And what it's trying to tell you is, is that those of you who are star seeds, you, you angels with a mission, you when you decided to come down here, you came down here through these physical bodies. All of us have parents, right? And we have grandparents and long lines of whoever. They have built up karma, okay, that you can see actual patterns that happen to you and could be happening to other family members. But you are able to break these patterns and habits. And the thing is, is that if you felt in your life, this does not make sense for the person I know who I am inside. It is because you were dealing with ancestral karma. Now, because I know some of you guys are, you know, are going to be in the comments 
And you're going to say, like, I've been dealing with this too long and I've been, you know, going through this and that. I know. I know. I've gone through a lot of stuff that I wish I never had to go through. But it's because you're doing a clearing. But in this time, that part is over. That part is over. This, this this karma that, you're, that you've been dealing with that's outside of yourself, constantly dealing with karmic relationships, it's ending, right? It's not all ending in a big swoop, but it's ending. And I know you know it's ending. I know you can feel the energies of change coming upon you, okay? Because I'm seeing it in your reading. You're just not completely out of the woods yet. Those of you who are going through the uh, hermit uh, mode thing, the, the, the darkness, the void, the underworld, that feeling, right? It is to shed the, that karmic, those karmic experiences to learn what that was about. Because I keep telling you guys, you're getting rerouted to a different destination, a whole new destination. Now, okay, because let me, let me get this. I, I got so much to say right now. Um... It's hidden from you right now. It is hidden from you. And I'm I'm not the boss of this. I, I'm just reading. OK, so I'm telling you it's hidden because in your very first row, you have the moon. But we know that because in previous readings, we've had, you know, the underworld, the void. This is darkness. Right. And the other thing that's hidden from you is your new partner, because the moon sits over the lovers. OK, and it's funny. I know it's your new partner, because even in the moon, the way these two dogs are sitting next to each other under the moon, these two lovers with the angel, okay? And beneath that is uh, temperance. We have another angel here, but it came in reverse. It's There's uh, imbalance here, right? Now, I know some of you who are getting out of relationships are coming out of relationships of imbalance, where spiritually you don't match up with someone. But what's hidden from you is the partnership that you are going into that is very much in line with your frequency or the frequency you are striving for. The thing is, if that person has already met that energy, you have to meet it as well. God is not going to bring together a soulmate union if you are not prepared for it. OK, if your soulmate is ready and you're not, there's no reason why God is going to be bringing this together. This relationship that you're going to have with this other person is, is going to have no sense of codependence, no emotional codependence. This is why you're getting time to shed all of that. This is why they keep putting you by yourself so you can see there's so much you can do on your own. You don't need people like this. You don't need relationships like that because your partner is not going to need relationships and things like that. And if you are already there, maybe maybe you're waiting on your 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 new soulmate to come in and um, be able to meet you at that level, whatever the case may be for you. Right. But on top of this partner. And this is why I'm talking about my shamans, my high priests, my high priestesses. There is another energy that is around you that wants to integrate itself with you in order to help you, I'll say, perform miracles. OK, or, or heighten your gift that you already have. It will. It, yes, it will heighten the gift you already have, but it or uncover gifts you don't even know you have. Right. Because this lovers is not only that partner for me. It is the union that you are going to have with your higher self, but or a higher divinity. I, I don't uh, I don't even know how to explain this to you guys. Um, it's it's almost like, let's say, uh, for those of you who follow uh, Ifa and you say you are a son of Ogun or daughter of Oshun or something like that. And it's a strong energy around you. That energy is able to actually integrate with you. That Orisha energy can integrate with you. You might want to even call it the Holy Spirit. Whatever you want to call it, it's an energy greater than yourself, right? That energy can integrate with you, but it's asking you to be more disciplined, um, to, to uh, shed devil energy, because here the devil is again. Obsessions, bad habits, okay? Um, even under here, we got two of fire. And I'm going to read this card for you because it is a union that you need to um, come into union with this energy. Hold on, give me one sec, guys. Got the sirens. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. I'm picking up the shaman energy with the Ten of Fire, which I'm going to read shortly, but I'm also picking it up with the King of Cups. But the King of Cups came in reverse, okay? Um, and I, what I want to tell you is, for some of you, I don't want you to be afraid of this integration, okay? Um, it's a necessary thing. It's almost as if it's why you're here. You are an anchor. You're an anchor. This, this second coming, 
This change is you. You are the second coming. OK, and let's say we, we're going to talk about like Christ energy, right? Because Christ energy is a real energy. That energy can only flow through you when you are ready, when your vessel is ready to receive it and then to be able to work. OK, because I'm not going to when I say Christ energy, Holy Spirit or Rishas, I'm just giving you guys the labels you need for whatever it is you believe in. It does not matter. I mean, it matters that, you know, the energy that you are aligned with. But um, it's the same energy. It's the same energy, because if you're still accustomed to a Christian belief, you'll call it the Holy Spirit. If you are accustomed to something else, you'll call it whatever it is that it presents itself to you as. But you'll know this energy. You'll know what I'm talking about. OK, so the thing is, is that it can't give you the boost you need until you get in alignment and sort of surrender to not knowing and strengthening your faith. OK, because um, this Knight of Cups, OK, it's in the reverse. Right. And it's it's telling me the same thing about this King of Cups. What it's saying is, see, the Knight of Cups has a very small stream of water. OK, that's the creativity, the spiritual influence. Right. It does not have the same amount of depth. You see all that water with the king? I don't have the queen out here or the queen. Right. Doesn't have that uh, that depth of water and connection. And what it's saying in, in your first row is I'm strengthening the depth of spirit energy that you have. That's what I'm going to do. But I can't until you're ready. And because after the moon, after the moon is the three of wands, which is a delay. The, 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 the blessing is delayed, whether it be a spiritual upgrade or a spiritual union, union in the spirit, union between you and another partner. OK, second row. Right. We have strength, strength in reverse. OK, we have the queen of wands in the upright. OK, we have the lovers in the upright. Then we have the king of cups in the reverse. OK, the two cards in the reverse are the king of cups and strength. OK, so this strength, if you don't believe, if you don't master the beast, right, um, if you don't have balance, then there's no way you could be the shaman that you're supposed to be. There's no way you could be the conduit of the energy that you're supposed to be. It's in the reverse. And it's almost like because you don't believe you are the shaman, it's not happening. Because in your second role, they want you to be the queen of wands. Confident. Confident in your ability. Confident in using your wand. Knowing you have the power. Right? That's a wand there. It directs energy. The queen of wands is confident and sure of herself. This is what you need to be because you also need to be confident in your union because that was in the upright. These are your two cards in the upright in that row. The queen of wands and the lovers. Be confident that God is going to direct you to your true soulmate. Be confident that you will recognize them because lovers is a choice. OK, you might have a choice between your true soulmate and some uh, negative karmic twin flame. And this asks you to know to use your intuition your wisdom and guidance to make the right choice. It's very important and be confident in your choice. You see this? Okay. All right. So also be confident in your abilities that you will come into union with that divine energy. Okay. All right. Your last row. This is all reversals and we'll, we'll talk about why. We got the eight of pentacles in the reverse. We got the hermit in the reverse. We have temperance in the reverse and we have the five of pentacles in the reverse they want you to release lack mentality your very last card of saying um i haven't ever received anything i always get the worst of it why me i you know it's that kind of talk that just keeps you keeps um drawing in the same energy of lack they said release the lack and, and, and um, you'll be able to focus more because the more you focus on lack, you're not focusing on what is going to actually bring you the outcome you want. OK, the more you see. So the lack distracts you from what it is you're supposed to be doing. And when you feel lack, when you feel all this lack, you start tapping into devil energy. Devil energy gets tapped into. See, and the other thing is you when you run away from what the hermit is doing, the inner work. You're running away from your angel. These two cards are sitting right next to each other in the reverse. Again, with harmony and balance. 
another angel. Because above that is the lovers. It was in the upright with the angel above, right? Okay? See? So this path is leading you to that angelic energy. It's leading you to balance, to understanding the angel inside of you. The power, the angelic power you have. He's standing there very sure of himself with power. This, that light is this. That's the energy that you're, you're understanding this. It only seems like a small lamp to you, but it's an, it's an entire angelic force, right? Okay, so here we go. And this is how I know because your, uh, your spread to the right definitely corresponds to what I'm seeing on your left. So we got the devil. This is, th this is what's in your opposing energy. This is what you should be trying to move away from, right? And then the card at the bottom of the deck was the two of fire. See, so we have another set of two, union, right? And we have a lion and lioness, okay? And we have these pillars. There's a gate, a portal. So here, let's see what that is saying. Give me one sec. About to get you the two of fire, all right? The two of fire says, in the upright, it says, need, need to join forces for mutual understanding and protection. Sorry, guys, all of this uh, white light. Sorry. It says a need to join forces for mutual understanding and protection. Guys, this is what I'm trying to talk about. When it comes to your, your actual uh, soulmate partners, a lion with his lioness, the masculine and the feminine. This isn't a lion and a tiger. You know, this isn't a lion and a liger. This is, um, or, or any other, or a lion and a panther. It's, they're, they're the same. They're the same, okay? Um, here, and I mean, and there's balance here between the two. There's a balance. And it says, a need to join forces for mutual understanding and protection. Only your soulmate will truly understand your path and who you are. You've been misunderstood by uh, past relationships. You probably are misunderstood by family and friends. But this person understands you. And they understand how precious you are and the protection that they need to give to you and how you'll protect them as well. No longer will you guys be um, available to negative energies. You guys will be watching each other's back, there for each other, okay? This person understands how you think, understands how you love, understands how, who you are in the spirit, okay? So it says companionship in a new enterprise or job. And I keep telling you guys that. Some of you guys are going to actually be working with the person that you're gonna end up falling in love with, okay? Companionship in a new enterprise or job, the joining of feelings. It says compared to our deeds expresses a logical equivalent. Equivalent is equal, a logical equivalent. And listen, a logical equivalent and a rationalist attitude. You know what I get from a logical equivalent and a rationalist attitude? It's going to be the partner where it really makes sense, where I use my head over my heart, okay? Or where my heart and my head are in balance. Not that, oh, I owe so-and-so because we've been together for so long and I know that they're not ready yet and they don't understand the spiritual realm like I do, but I, I'm supposed to save them. You are not supposed to save anybody. Not like that. Not how you think or perceive it. It's not how you save someone, okay? By um, holding yourself back. You don't save anybody holding yourself back, right? So this is your equivalent, your logical equivalent. And the other reason why I say that is because the last time I read you, remember I had the emperor and the empress um, where your emperor was in the re reverse, but then there was a king of swords and he was in the upright. And that is this new partner coming in. And you, that is the person that makes sense. I keep picking up um, logical energy, like something that makes sense. And, and guys, go with the right choice. Go with the right choice, all right? So it, here, hold on, give me a second. It says, uh, with a rationalist attitude, not some funky attitude, okay? Not some, I'm, I'm, but look at me and look at them. I, and I know this person brings something to the table, but do not bring your ego into play with this relationship. Okay, this is about your soul, right? This is about what you promised. This, I'm talking to star seeds here now. So it says, if you put these principles into practice, your dominion says, excuse me, it says your dominion and your achievement will increase. Whoever crosses this entrance may also cross different frontier, frontiers, okay? I'm about to say frontiers, frontiers. And this is how I feel about this energy of uh, these unions. Not only is the spirit energy and this new person, you guys are going to do so many things together. Y'all going to touch so many lives. 
You're going to have access to so many places and things, even in the higher spiritual realms. OK, it's that kind of a union. This is a very important union happening that they want you to, to make yourself available for. Right. OK. Um, and, and again, it says if you put these principles into practice, OK, the principles of um, uh, a rationalist attitude and, and, and expressing logic. OK, it's more of the all your swords in the upright. OK, having uh, mental clarity. OK, um, it says, excuse me one second. It says your your achievements will increase. Your achievements will increase. OK, so that's the union that I'm picking up for you. But again, you're going through certain tests. You're going through things right here. I'm going to read because this card came out again with the devil, with the, the devil. But this time it came in the upright. It says the uh, five of water. All right. So hold on. Let me get that for you real quick. Five of water. Five of water says, come back. Where are you at? Upright. Here. This is what they're asking you to release. All of this deep sorrows. It says deep sorrow over problems you, you plan to solve. Problems you planned to solve. Things that you should have gotten rid of that you said, I'm going to get over this. I'm going to start... I'm going to start fresh, okay? And you didn't do it yet. It says, bad luck with friends or lovers and a broken marriage or relationship. There is no time for, la for lamentation, for you to be crying like over spilled milk. It says, there's no time for lamentation, protest, or complaints. It talks about a loss of values, negative en energy surrounding you. You don't have time. This is because I've been picking up, you guys are supposed to be leaving this karmic stuff for a while now. So now that this new energy is coming in, it's like, you know, when you get away from this, you might not have all the time in the world to just, you know, not do anything to say, like, I just need to spend some time to myself or I don't want to get to know anybody right now. Like, all of that. No, 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 no. You need to be available for the new because some certain things aren't going to happen again. Just certain things won't happen again. So. Get over the sorrows, process them, process them quickly. Cause I keep getting, like I told you, I get these dates and times coming in for you guys. And you got, and it's not only just about you meeting a new lover. It is about this energy that is supposed to be integrating with you because here we got 10 of fire. You see how he's walking on hot coals. Okay. He's being tested. His strength is being tested. Right? So let's read that. 10 of fire, 10 of fire. It says, yeah, here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to read. It's two things I want to read with this one. So in its upright meaning says you will have to face the test posed by life or by your karma. OK, ask your spiritual guides for help. Trusting, trusting that you will not be abandoned during hard times and you will overcome these tests without any difficulty or hardship. Your rewards will be an increase in your self-esteem and the acknowledgement of your honesty by others. OK, and even when you um, are coming into this new union, please believe you will be tested. You'll be tested just because you choose the right person doesn't mean other people are not going to try to come and test you or pull you away from that person. You're going to pass those tests. But this is not even just that, because I was talking about the shaman energy. Right. And this is the part that I want to tell you. So it goes it says 10 piles of red hot coals. OK, it says anticipate a test of strength and courage, but also the confirmation of truth and reality, ruling out any doubts or uncertainty. And that's what I was trying to tell you about you feeling like you have this angelic energy. You doubt that you doubt you are the shaman, but you are. You're very, very powerful. So here, hold on. All right. Ruling out doubts and uncertainty. OK, it says the time has come to show what what can and must be. It says when the truth of the spirit prevails, matter is not harmed. And Amorisha with his inner saint walks. This is him. Okay. It says with his inner saint, inner saint. Remember, I keep telling about this divinity around you, right? With his inner saint walks um, impassively over the burning embers showing afterwards no trace of energy, burn, blister, or wound. The trance and his faith are so strong and the power of the Orisha is so unlimited that the man's feet seem to be covered with an ethereal and invisible asbestos coat, protecting the sun or medium of the saint and demonstrating 
its presence in this world. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You are the second coming. You are what's going to change this world. You do have gifts and you have other gifts that are about to be uncovered. It's, this is what this is talking about. You can walk across this fire and there will be no burns. Why? It says, it says, because you're the son, meaning because like uh, when we talk about any fire, like, you're the daughter of uh, um, Oshun or daughter of Yemaya or daughter of Ogun. You know, I'm, I'm sorry for putting female energies with female energies, but you could be, you could be a, a woman with a masculine Orisha energy, right? Daughter or son of this thing, right? This is the one governing you or a medium, medium meaning something is speaking through me. I am the channel. I am the in-between between the spirit world and the physical world. I have a message for you. Uh, I don't know if you guys see other people's dead loved ones or things like that um, and, and are able to send messages to other people. But this energy is, that's what it's trying to tell you. In the, in the upright, this is what this is. And your gifts are coming out. There is literally, it says, let me go back. It says, with his inner saint, walks pat impassively across burning embers showing afterwards no trace of injury. All right, you guys are going to be able to perform miracles, okay? But the issue that keeps coming up right here with temperance in reverse, and right here we have the, what is this? The, the ace of, sorry guys, I don't know if you guys heard that dog barking in the, uh, hallway but here we have the ace of water in the reverse and what that's talking about is imbalance that's imbalance right okay so then let me move on your last two cards confirm each other right so here we have the, okay guys sorry about that your last two cards are the five of earth in the reverse okay and the three of air also in the reverse okay so like i was saying with the um five of earth what it's saying is in the reverse it's saying it says you can make up for some of the lost ground but nothing will be easy you can make up for some of the lost ground but nothing will be easy and perhaps what you get will not be permanent or even lasting it is advisable to recover spiritual values to find your balance again again because like your temperance is in the reverse you need to recover spiritual values to find your balance again the thing about this card is this goat is being placed into the fire to be purified this dark scene in the background are, is, are the dark negative things of the subconscious. That is what's being burned away from the goat. Because what that does is these dark things strengthen the ego. And what we're trying to do is burn that away, burn those things away, put the ego in its right place so that the spiritual energy can integrate with you and you can know real power. Okay? Now, three of earth, three of earth in the reverse, sorry, three of air. Okay, three of air in the reverse. Let me get that for you. Give me one second. Three of air in the reverse says, a time of utter desperation is gone. A time of utter desperation is gone. Maybe danger too, but wounds will not be easy to overcome. Tears will come again because of the painful memories. <laughs> painful memories. Healing will be slow and difficult because your heart will have been torn out of your body. I know that's a crazy description at the end. It's very dramatic. But that's the purpose of the fire. It's the memories. We're burning away the memories to, be, to become new. We're burning away the devil energy to get in the union, to get the union. You see how pristine and white this is? Okay? No blemish, right? To, to get what you deserve. You're being purified to get what you deserve, to bring balance back into your life, to show you who you are, the power you have. You guys really have real, true spiritual gifts, real gifts that are trying to come out and actually be worked through you. OK, you have unions that are supposed to happen, a real soulmate and not just about some on some love stuff. It's more than love. It's, it's big love. It's a real love, a true love, um, a not and not a codependent love. OK, that is what's happening for you. But you got to get comfortable with the hermit path. OK, because it keeps coming out in the reverse. You have to focus more. You have to focus more. Regain your balance and strength. We got so much stuff about balance here with temperance and strength. But both cards coming up in the reverse. This is all about balance, harmony, right? Man, but there is a union. You just don't see it yet. And it will remain hidden from you. It will remain hidden from you for as long as you want to um, uh, not trust in your faith not um, surrender to the process. 
Okay, if you don't want to surrender to the process, what is supposed to happen for you will be hidden. The thing is, guys, there, these are contracts and promises you've already made. You're coming to remember your divinity. You've been asleep for a while, and now you're being awakened. We are coming into a new age and time where we need you. We need you to wake up. You are not a normal person, okay? You have gifts and abilities. You will get true love, the love you deserve, but you have something you're supposed to do here on this earth and you can't get around it. That's why everything is making you so anxious or, or, or you're lacking in this confidence because you are not supposed to live a regular humdrum life. Your life is bigger than that. And I don't, and what I mean by that is, and it's not to come at anybody's profession or anything like that, because that's not what this is about. This is about spirit because the spirit could actually work through the profession. I keep telling you, not all of you, your shaman energy may come out via another skill or gift you have. Like I keep ta talking about you, you artists and um, I always use like hair design and, or uh, people who work with their hands or whatever it is you do, you know, your gift shines through and you doing the thing you do. And some of you are even scared to do those things, you know, to actually start a, a business with a talent or a skill you already have that will only be enhanced greater when you start to have a real um, spiritual union, spiritual practice that works for you. You'll see an increase in clientele. You'll see um, the attitudes of your clients change when you really get into the energy uh, of your soul and, and, and allow this, this higher energy to start working through you. Um, right. I was going to tell you guys, the very first time I ever felt this energy that I'm, that I'm telling you about was in high school. Okay. It was in high school. It was, um, uh, back in 2006, I was 16, 17, and, um, I was the Illinois speech state champion in oratorical declamation. You can look it up. All right. Um, I was the Illinois speech state, state champion in oratorical declamation. And at that time, um, I had decided that I wanted to stop playing football because I really knew that that wasn't my thing. Um, you know, I told you guys, you know, I was a little fat kid and everything when I was growing up, but I played Pop Warner football. My dad helped me shed my weight. Um, my dad really helped me even, you know, with whatever, you know, issues that we have with our parents. They, my dad showed me I could be whatever I wanted to be. He showed me if you you if you worked at something, um, you could actually change. And I did. I shed the weight, you know, because in Pop Warner football, you couldn't even play football if you were overweight. So I had to shed the weight to play. I used to play on the line all the time, um, like being a lineman, you know, either a def defensive lineman or an offensive lineman. And he always used to tell me, um, you're going to you you're going to be the running back. And I when I had shed the weight, I was taller and lankier. Right. So I'm like, I don't even look like a, a running back. What do you mean? But I ended up playing running back at that time when I was playing Pop Warner, um, I would go in and out at running back. I wouldn't do that all the time. But when I got to high school, I became a starting running back at both high schools I went to because I even transferred schools um, and I was good. I was good. But by my junior year, I had known that th this is not what I'm going to be. I don't want to be a football player. I don't, I don't want to go to college and play football. I don't even want to do that. And I, I had. Um, in grade school, I had done speech and in high school, I decided to do it because my aunt, Jennifer, who is um, her and my sister were born at the same time. Um, she was really good in drama and speech and different things like that. And I found in grade school, I was doing something that she was doing. And then, boom, in high school, I was, I'm doing it again when I when I joined the speech team. I wasn't a uh, drama person, per se, but in oratorical declamation, you take people's speeches, um, you recite them. You have to come up with an intro. You have to get into character, though. You have to get into character. And my sophomore year, I had done it while I was playing football. My junior year, I decided I'm done. I had had a little small, like little injury, and I used that as my way out. I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna just stop these last couple games. I'm going to be like, no, I'm done. And I'm going to focus on the speech team stuff that I was doing. And I had uh, gotten um, Steve Jobs' uh, speech to Stanford. All right. His speech to Stanford. And um, he was talking about his uh, battle with pancreatic cancer and, you know, just how um, Apple got started. And for a, a, a young man, a teenager who's never gone through any kind of loss like that, um, never had to build anything from the ground up at all. I really had to tap into my emotions to get that across, because I remember my mom saying, like, you're really going to have to, you know, work with that. You know, like 
I think she perceived me to not be able to to go that deep, but I knew I could. I know. I remember when I when when I was going over it and you know running through the speech, and um, I already knew I was like whatever. If you don't believe in me, I know I believe in me. So uh, at that time, I was working at uh, Office Max. That was my first job. I got that job when I was fifteen. Uh, working at Office Max, and when I would, when I was in the aisles, I would be saying my speech. I would be um, if I wasn't helping somebody, and I was like you know fixing what was you know. Uh, in every aisle before the store closed, I would go from aisle to aisle and I would just repeat my speech over and over and over again. And I knew um, that year I was going to win because the year before, my sophomore year when I was on the speech team, I had made it to either regionals or sectionals. And I was so surprised because it was my first year ever doing it. And I said, wow, look, look how far I got. This is the thing, right? I had made it to regionals and I didn't win at regionals. But then I have found out there's sectionals after regionals and after sectionals, there's state. So in my sophomore mind, I said I was only like two um, tournaments away from going to state. Like, wow, look, look where you are. You were only two, two tournaments from going to state. So I had already put in my mind my junior year, you're going to state. Right. So I would like I told you, I was at um, Office Max saying my speech over and over and over again. And um I had made it. I finally made it. I, every single tournament I had that year, I won. I was first place all the time, all the way. Even when I got to regionals, first place. Sectionals, first place. Then it was time to go to state, right? Nobody from my team would go with me. Nobody. I, I had like four other people on my team. And um, it was out of jealousy. A lot of them um, thought that my that the coach only, our speech coach only cared about me and I mean, she did show me like some favoritism, but nothing like that. You know, I mean, I literally was the only person on the team winning any medals in their category. The only person they had their categories. They weren't winning. Right. And this is this is could also be like for you guys, like, you know, the jealousies that I've been picking up for you. You know, somebody the blessing is already on you and you're going to win and achieve. This is the stuff you're burning away. The haters, the, the habits. Right. So um, I go to state. Now, when you're doing a speech tournament, it's, it's three rounds, you know, even when I was up, at, up until sectionals. But when you go to state, there's only two rounds. You only have two rounds to prove yourself. OK, so um, whew, when I went there, it's you, you're super nervous, you're super, super nervous. And the very first round, I, and mind you, like I said, none of my teammates came, so I didn't have any support. I had to ask my own friend, my own best friend at the time. I had to ask him to come with me for support because none of them would come. So he came and he had heard my speech over and over and over again. Right. So the very first round, um, usually when I start my speech, I would do an intro and then I would get into the speech. This time I had went straight into the speech without saying my intro. But then I went and put the intro right right in the beginning too. So like I got a paragraph of the speech in and I hit my intro. After my intro, I went back into the speech and I'd seen it done before. That's why I knew in my mind where I could stop speaking and then put my intro in. You cannot perform without giving an introduction, whether you say it within the speech or you give it to your uh, audience before you even start, right? So he was looking at me like, what the hell did you just do? I caught myself. I was able to, to continue. It's not like I froze because that had happened to me before, too. I had had a tournament where I completely froze. I couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. No, couldn't remember anything. Didn't freeze, though. I didn't freeze. And um, I told him when we were done, I had told my coach and she when I said, oh, I accidentally said my um, went into my speech instead of saying my intro first. She just threw her head down and she got so like. Like, basically, Justin, you lost. You just fucked yourself. You're not going to win state, right? And I was, like, looking at her like, I can't believe she just expressed that, like, oh, my God. Like, what the what the hell did you just do? Like, you just you just threw it all away. And because I, I knew in my mind, I'm like, it's, I still have a chance. Like, I, I'm good, right? So um, the other thing was there was a guy there basically my opponent his name was and for those of you please bear with me i'm going to get to this energy i just want you to know what it took what it took i had an opponent opponent his name was robert whitley and he did my same category oratorical declamation and he also did um dramatic interpretation he was cold he was cold he was cold in dramatic interpretation he was cold at oratorical declamation i sat in on some of his rounds boy was a beast right 
So um, the thing was, I was like, you know, if I'm going to beat him, I have to do my best. So when me and my friend went back to the hotel room, I said, you, can you leave for a minute? I said, I got to pray. And at that point in my life, I was on a high from going to every single tournament winning, um, knowing that I had a talent and a gift. And it was it was for sure. Right. And then to be coming at the time where it was to tell me you're the best. I'm at a place where I'm going to prove myself to be the best. And then I'm having these issues of, oh, man, like just relying on myself. You know, I messed up just thinking I had it, you know. And then when I'm telling my coach, oh, I messed up, she's stopped. She's not believing in me. So these things are running through my head like, you know, you could lose. I didn't want to lose. I did not want to lose. I wanted to win. I knew I deserved to win. I knew I was a winner. I knew what it took. And this is the part where faith steps in. Because when I was a sophomore and I realized, oh, I was only two meets away from going to state. I said, well, I know physically and mentally what it takes to get there. But to actually overcome not being able to express yourself, not being able to be the best, because you could watch other people around you. Everybody's giving other people praise for other stuff like that. This is my thing. This is my thing. Finally had my thing. And I was going to be the best. OK. And I said, I am. And I'm not going to um, let these things stop me. But there was nothing I could do. I couldn't. I felt in that moment I couldn't rely only on my mental. I needed God. I needed God. So I went in the room, I told him to get out the room and I got on my knees and I started praying and I said, Lord, because I remember my grandfather saying this because my granddad, he's a, uh, a bishop, uh, but at the time he was a pastor. And I remember hearing in church, you, you, uh, the, you're the head, not the tail. I said, Lord, you said I am the head and not the tail. And I just kept repeating, I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I, I, I know, you know, I can win this tournament. I asked God to be with me, help me, help me, right? So... I finished that. Oh, sorry, guys. Hold on. Finish that prayer. I finished that prayer. And um, when I was done, told me to come back in. The next day is round two. When I went in for that round, um, when I stood up to go in front of the judges, because usually there are like uh, like two judges, sometimes three judges, um, especially for a um, like a final round, because this was, I told you, it was only two rounds. So um, there were several judges sitting all across the row, right? And then the audience behind them in the classroom. There's a, just whoever decides to come sit, to sit in. When I stood up, there was an energy. That prayer triggered the energy to, to come over me. Literally from the top of my head all the way down to my feet, I felt like a blanket of energy wrapped around me. OK, and what it did was what this energy did, it it actually took over my functions. Right. What it did was I couldn't look at the audience. All of a sudden, the I it made me um, the, it was a commencement address. So what I ended up doing was looking at looking behind the judges at the other people who came in to watch as if they were um, the audience at Stanford. And I blocked the judges out as if like, hey, you guys are judges. You're just judging me. You know, I'm not going to look at you. But there was even a particular side of the room that um, that spirit wouldn't or the, this force that came over me would not let me look at. And I say that to say, because sometimes when people are judging you, um, especially with what I was doing, you'll get judges that uh, will give you low scores or judge you for fickle things. Right. And with several judges in there, I know there's had to be one of those negative judges in there like that. And sometimes judges could make movements or faces that could throw you off. Right. So I don't know if that was what was going to occur, but that was the intuitive feeling that I had, that there was someone I couldn't look at. So because I couldn't look at one, I couldn't look at none. And I only looked out. And so the, the dude I said was my ri rival, Robert Whitley. I saw him with his head down when I was speaking and when I'm when, when before I was speaking and when I started to speak. He lifted his head and his eyes were huge. And I knew then I said he can see it. He can see whatever this is that has taken over me because he's heard me in the first round and I'm different from that round. This next day, he's looking at a different uh, competitor. I don't know who this guy is. Right. And I'm giving the speech and I literally 
this energy literally took over my body. I don't know how it did it. You know, I don't know the process, but this is what I'm telling you this energy is. That the energy was foreign to me. I never felt anything like that before in my life. And when it came time to um to, you know, give out the final awards, they had us all on stage and it came down to just him and I. And then they said my name as the winner. You know, I looked all shocked and everything like that. And when I, when you win at state, you have to say the speech that you gave in front of the entire audience. So in front of 3,000 people, um, I had said my speech. And that didn't happen again. That energy, it did not happen again. I didn't feel it. That's why I know it was, there was a difference. Never in the entire time that I'd ever done a speech had something like that ever happened to me. But it didn't happen until I requested the energy to come down on me. And I was ready for it. I could actually take it on because of the practice. It didn't jar me, it didn't shake me, it didn't um, make me forget my speech because I had constantly, repetitiously gone over and over and over. I was ready for that day. And this is the what I'm trying to tell you for what's going on with you. The hermit is preparing you for this time and that energy is gonna come over you. And then you're going to be able to do your thing and show your skill, whatever that is. The energy will come over you and you'll be able to express it, use it, um, heal people with it, whatever it is. OK, I only told that story so you guys understand and don't be afraid of the integration, because when I did that prayer, it wasn't like I did a ritual, you know, um, some sort of magic ritual or called on um, some entity that I'm not aware of. OK. Um, this energy is going to come over you and be able to work through you. But it won't just be a one-time thing. It'll be often, often. So not only are you coming into union with a person, you're coming into union with a divine energy. All right? Um, that is what I have for you guys. I know it was long. Thank you for bearing with me if you made it this far. Um, if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you'll be updated anytime that I put out a reading. Um, if you would like to book a personal reading with me, the link to book is in the description box below. The current Patreon playlist is also in the description box below. And don't forget, um, August 29th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are having a group reading on Zoom, but the Zoom link will be on Patreon. So make sure to join Patreon. All right, guys, I hope you guys have a, a good day, a good night for whenever it is you're watching this video. All right.